How does Thomas believe in the run? Is Robbie was believing the run? And guess what, Robbie? Oh. We're off the leash. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah, Meg's out at CIM, and now she's uh, having Napa Valley days with her sister. Mm. So um, when is she that, gets back, we'll do a full recap. What were you going to ask? Oh, is she attending the Catalina wine mixer out there? It is. <laughs> it's not that. It's the effing Catalina wine mixer. Yeah. Well, keeping it clean from the start. Yeah. Well, yeah. I did. I did. I, I didn't say the um, actual word. I know. I'm impressed. I know. I'm trying. That wasn't an AI edit right there. No. Um. Yeah. Oh, man. Out in California. Crushing grapes with their foot like Lucille Ball. How How old is that? Oh, uh, that's a that's reference, a reference actually, from like <laughs> yeah. black and white days. Mm, I'm going to have to dig deep for that one. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever crushed grape grapes with my feet before. Although I felt like I crushed grapes I, or I, something with my feet this whole week because we were on our feet for oh, about, man. I don't know, a thousand hours straight at I the know. running event. My feet were definitely crushed. I, I don't mean, know. And then we wore good shoes. There was no shoe that would save your your feet from that no. kind of activity all day long it, on a cement floor. It doesn't even matter. The amount of step, I wasn't really counting. I didn't have a stepometer, um, but I didn't. A pedometer? Yeah. Pedometer sounds weird to me, so I'm just going to go with stepometer. Is it because of pedophiles? Yeah. That's that is kind of weird. That's actually why. Why? why? <laughs> Let's not get into it okay, before but they're we both, get real. It's Latin, right? They're both Latin. Yeah. A pedestrian. I don't know. I guess, in, I don't know. PDA I don't know right? the etymology of the both either of those terms, but I feel like there should be more of a separation. Yeah, like it, who needs a pedometer? Yeah, just why don't we call just it a steppy county? A walk a meter. A walk a meter. I like that. Walk a walk a. Um, yeah, Fonzie Bear. <laughs> Ooh, Fozzie. I always Fozzie. F- Fo- I always say Fonzie. I always get it wrong because I'm always thinking Fo- Fonzie no. Fozzie. Fonzie is the one who jumped yeah, the I shark. Know. And yeah, but it's like when I first think of it. Do you know it's amazing sponsor. right now? I just keep, I in the back of my head, I still hear Megan saying, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> she's just constantly, she's, she's the angel. Is she the angel or the devil on our shoulders? Uh, Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. I have been watching a little bit of him recently because I, I watched The Muppets Christmas Carol um, recently. Were with the kids into that? With Fonzie Bear. <laughs> I, my um, favorite was Beaker. Yeah, Beaker. I don't even know what was happening with him. What did he have? Was he just mute or just a um, genius? I believe that he was something made in the lab. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, so that's his etymology. I believe so. I believe like he's like the assistant. Assistant. I mean, who uh, knows where Muppets come from? What's the guy with the without the eyes and what's his partner's name? Oh, do you know? I don't know his name. I don't know. They were kind of nerds, though. I mean, Beaker was cool, but he was a nerd. Yeah, Let's I mean, they devoted their lives to science. Never-ending rich dude. Remember that? No. What? Is a never-ending rich dude? When people would call you a nerd, you'd be like, I know. I'm a never-ending uh, rich never, dude. Never never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be a never-ending rich dude. That's why. Yeah. Did you I, ever, I was like, damn it. You never got called just, a nerd. Oh, I got called nerd, geek, dork. Oh, man. You name it. Well, a, bur, bur, bugger. a jerk is a junior-educated rich kid, so... Yeah. Are these all good things though? Like to be called <laughs> like if someone called me a junior educator's rich kid. It I'd sounded like, cool, I think, when you were eight, but in hindsight, I don't it no, might not have been. My big comebacks were like up your butt with a coconut, in your nose with a rubber hose. Dude, classics. Yeah, I love I that mean, kids still say stuff like that. You can't come back from that. You really can. Like when someone tells you to put a coconut up your butt, I mean your day's ruined. I mean yeah, kid burns were the best. All right. So anyways. By the way, for anyone watching this YouTube ver- YouTube version trying to get the rundown on the running event, you might get it. You might not. Yeah. But hey, why don't we tell people what the running event is? I think if you're following running these days, you know what it is. But a couple of years ago, people didn't know what it was. Yeah. It's, let's be real, not the coolest name ever. Like there could have been a little it, more creativity around it. It does kind of, <laughs> it's descriptive. <laughs> it's the the event that's running. Yeah. But it, well, what's crazy is that there actually isn't, there's some running going on, but they it's throw a five k in there. But you would think the running event is just a bunch of running happening. It it could be called the running gear, shoe and gear event and nutrition. So how would you best describe it? I mean, it's a big convention and it's getting bigger. Um, where anything that the vendors are trying to show you for the next upcoming year, they come and show off their stuff. And it used to be a big event for sales. So they would have you know, the local running stores and the 
all the running stores would come and they would place their orders for the year. Like they'd see, oh, this is the Solomon S Lab Spectre. I would love to carry this for my store. Let me write an order for a hundred units. Yeah, Brooks Ghost forty five done but now everybody does that online they've already seen everything whatever so it's become more of a social kind of like networking you see a little bit of what's coming up in 2024 if you're lucky like we are they might whip you into a private room and show you some stuff coming out for 2025 it's a big deal i, I mean it tell is you the to way shut that, your mouth and then we'll probably end up spilling the beans on it like in two weeks or we just predict the future with our reviews we're like this is great <laughs> but wouldn't it be great if they updated it this way yeah wham now it's cool too because it just keeps getting bigger it's even seems to be expanding into the not outdoor space but just like you'll find arcteryx north face yeah. like a lot of different I mean, really stretching the limits of running. There was even a sloth there. Oh, yeah. Do you know I mean, that was Megan got kissed by the sloth? I'm pretty sure I did too. Just want to say. Okay, was, that was guy gets chick. around for, for, oh, it was. Her yeah, name her was name Jackie. Ja- yeah, Jackie. Jackie the sloth. Hey, you know what? What? Jackie's a slut. Um, okay. <laughs> we I mean, might have to cut that part out. <laughs> I, I didn't say it, Jackie. Well, I mean, she's... I think you meant to say sloth. Sloth. That's yeah, what I meant to say. You forgot to add in an extra a, H a on per, the end A there. promiscuous sloth. Yeah. Because she was kissing everybody. I mean, she was really all about that life. I mean, imagine if you had uh, two toes on each leg or arm and you had to hang around in a enclosed space all day and then suddenly you're on the floor of the running event. And probably the most popular thing at the running event. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's even more popular than Kelvin Kiptum, who was there for a little As bit. As a matter of fact, I went and saw the sloth. I did not go see Kelvin. True. I tried to, we tried to go check. Uh, did Kelvin kiss you? See him and meet him. I don't, I think it's frowned upon in some, uh, some cultures. No, because it's Europeans, they kiss everybody. He's not European. It doesn't matter. <laughs> He's probably been to Europe. I mean, true. Yeah. I, mean, I heard that Carlith Keys tried to kiss you on both cheeks she didn't try but she said she almost tried because she's living in spain now i think that's a ruse i think people just want to get close up to that mustache that's actually yeah now that you say that it's probably true i mean when i came home from the running event uh my kid was like i was you know what he said he said to me he said you know what i was really uh, worried that you were going to come home without a mustache. I was, <laughs> I was like, why? why? He's like, I just thought you were going like, to shave it while you were gone. I'm like, which is just not a great place to be in because like, they now know me as having a mustache. And I'm like, I might have to like keep up this thing for oh, the dude, rest that's of my going, life. That is the rest you of my life. You think it is? It is. This is it. Oh, man. Dude, I've seen your I face without it. It's not, <laughs> it's not, I think you keep it. I don't know if I can do it the rest of my life. But. It gives you a nice feeling focus point sometimes i hope that i just lean um like too close to a campfire maybe we'll just burn it off but not get third see i don't think that's very it'll traumatize your kids they clearly like it Uh, they don't know any better that's the thing i'd stick with it you know what else i'd stick with Hmm. my lagoon pillow oh yeah you got to because we need it sleeping at the running event which is hard to come by and lagoon gives you that sleep it does i mean robbie have you taken the test uh, I didn't cause I just kind of took whatever took pillow the one came that was here. here. <laughs> so it's like, I should have taken it. Do you feel like it was kismet? You got the right pillow? Yeah. I mean, I slept on it last night, so it seems to be giving me the sleep I need. I mean, the pillows are awesome. Yeah. I, with washable outside, you can get it tuned to your sleep needs. Yeah. And it's pretty awesome. And, uh, the best part is you can get a discount using Code believe. Yeah, you get 15% off your first order. So head over to lagoonsleep.com slash believe and uh, get that discount. Yeah. So you know what else you could do? You could also buy a gift certificate or gift yeah, card for I mean, a loved one. The loved one. There's always a loved one in your life that could use a pillow. Or it is. And, and you know what? If they don't know that you love them and you buy them a pillow, yeah, I mean, it'll that's, be a little creepy, but now they'll know. Yeah, it's like borderline you love them or borderline you're creepy. Like imagine you, know, you just start dating, you haven't really stayed over at their house too often, and you give them a pillow. <laughs> I feel like you really got to know someone to give them a pillow for Christmas. It's that intimate level? Yeah, I mean, it's almost like even a, I was trying to think another another item that maybe, like a tooth, I don't know, toothbrush, I don't know. I feel like that's also in. 
I would feel awkward like if somebody, if I was dating someone, they're like, "Here's a toothbrush." I'd be like, "What's the matter?" Is that a gift? <laughs> is that a gift or just a recommendation at that point? <laughs> it is. Mm. But yeah. All right, let's okay. get back to uh, the trade show called the running event. So I don't know that we have to give like a full rundown of our week. I mean, it's just going to be a little bit self-aggrandizing, I feel like. But I think we can talk about... Oh, I like that you went with a big word. Yeah. Um, Self-indulgent? Yeah, all those things. All right. but I mean, I liked the fact that we got there, got off the plane, and we met up with Adam, who was from Norda and, and used to be with Satisfy Running. Mm -hmm. And we went for a run. We And immediately, Sunday afternoon... Dan Rao. Oh, it was on. I was so confused. Yeah, I didn't know where is. that was happening. That's why I think, Dan, you need to re talk to your boss. Yeah. Change the name. Oh, uh, the, I thought you were actually talking about the race you want, even. The, so, yeah, our friend who works for Sunday afternoons, they make you like those hats to protect you from the sun. You know, they have like 25 different legionnaires. But he won the NCR marathon last weekend here in Maryland. Sunday morning. Uh, yeah. So, Exactly. And then he, he was there for the running event. So he came out in a run with us as well. Kind of just nice run along the Lady Thank Bird God trail. he was tired from the NCR because yeah. we did not go extremely fast. Uh, I got us lost, of course, pretty much right away. We tried a new shoe. Uh, did you try this the first day? Yeah, we did. We met. So before we went on the run, we checked into the running event, which is at the Austin Convention Center. And we were staying like two blocks away. So it was pretty pretty easy and seamless uh and then we met with solomon <sighs> who handed over to us a brand new shoe that they had um coming from so obviously from solomon but from the s lab yeah which the s lab is like their Audi zero it's their top, top tier line. yeah uh, both in trail and in road and so our buddy Aaron, we she even we did a video that we put in our stories. Meg was the first person in the US or maybe the world to mm -hmm. get a production pair. Yeah. Wait, are we not also production pairs? We are, but we made the video of Megan, so she's the first. If they had handed it to us exactly the same time and oh. we are all on video, then we would have been the first. But Meg was the first. Wait, when I don't know what video? I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay. It's probably playing right now for the people watching at home. Know what's happening. Okay. So yeah, we did the, we ran in that, in that shoe right after we got it. I mean, might as well. We normally oh. do shoe reviews at the end, but why don't we talk about this? Because yeah. this is our shoe. Of the yeah, that's week fine. Here. That's fine. All right. So the, the main thing behind the Spectre, S-Lab Spectre, is it's a road racing shoe, but it's designed for middle of the pack marathoners. So like 3.30 or so um, marathon time. And they said they tested it and it's more efficient, especially late stages of the race. So once you're past 10K, this shoe is supposed to really benefit that person who is spending a little more time on their feet. Yeah, so maybe like a 3.30 marathon or, or slower. And honestly, sometimes I feel like that stuff's just a gimmick. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't Like what... I want the fastest. I want a race car, you know? Right. That's the thing. It's like, if you, that's the tough part. I'll get to Not that. Not a race car, but the most right. stripped down, craziest race car. Exactly. Yeah. So, but this shoe, they said they tested it and tested it with runners at that pace. And this shoe was actually more beneficial. You're not getting as much benefit from the their top of the line. So for them, that would be the S-Lab Phantom. Yeah. Which, Phantasm. Phantasm. Which is, right. a, which is a great shoe. I reviewed that and I really enjoyed that. Um but then this shoe, which has, you know, a high stack of, it has a stack of uh, like Piba foam and then a, a smaller stack of EVA foam on the bottom. Yeah. And that they said that overall, all the components in this, it's an S-Lab shoe. They said this is not a takedown. Like Endorphin Speed is a lesser shoe than the Endorphin Pro from Saucony. Mm -hmm. uh, the SE Trainer is a lower uh Right. tier shoe than the SE um, Elite. So they're saying, no, this has all the same materials. It's just tuned and set up for the runner that's going to be out there a little bit longer. And and it, the way that they describe it, you're going to be out there 50% longer. Mm -hmm. So if you're finishing at two, 209, 219 in your S-Lab Phantasm, and then you're finishing at 330, there's a big difference in, in your knees is what they're saying. But... I kind of agree with Robbie on this. I was thinking about it because 
I got my miles in and Robbie overall, like let's just talk about it as a shoe. Yeah. I think I really loved it as a shoe. Uh, I think I only have two runs in it, so I can't give a full report, but I, I thought it had a really nice roll and kind of pop off the foot. I like this stability on this. The plate kind of extends up, uh, gives you a little bit Rings. of stability and, I don't, I don't know. For some reason, I really just loved running in this shoe. I was surprised actually because, I, not, I mean, Solomon. The road shoes, I've never yeah. really found one that I love. Aside from the Phantasm, it hasn't been really impressive to me. And so I was surprised at how much I kept wanting to run in this shoe. Yeah, I really liked it. I did, I used it for every run while we were in Austin. And I came home and I wanted to get, you know, make sure that I was well over the 20 miles for the review. So I kept running in it. Mm -hmm. One issue, I'll get to that in a second. But overall, I love the way the shoe feels. It's definitely my favorite Solomon ever. Yeah, I agree. It's They definitely did something right with it, for sure. Uh, now, of course, to take it, there's only like one way to almost test it for real, for real, which is putting it in an actual half marathon or marathon. Or getting on. Probably a marathon. It's supposed to be marathon. I know. But getting in it, I, I would want to do like a treadmill. Yeah. Like where you can test your oxygen and stuff like that. But I will say like running and I feel like it is good for up tempo. And once you do get to a pace, it kind of settles in nicely. Right. And I think the weight of on it is a, a little bit less than the Alpha Fly 2. I think it's yeah. like in the 8.2 range for a size 9. But I will say with everything, uh -huh. two things. One, I was, and this could have probably happened in any shoe. I was feeling pretty confident with the rubber. But I was coming around wood decking that was wet when I was on a run here because we run around the harbor and there's decking. Um, and I took a spill like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It just slipped right out from underneath me. I'm not going to put that on this sh shoe because that decking is crazy. Yeah. I don't That's know if there's why any I, shoe. I put a caveat. But um, I do feel like it it is fun to run. I just, I don't know if I mentally can get over like we just got the Alpha Fly three, yeah, and you just ran up and down while I filmed you doing some goofy stuff. Yeah, I ran like a mile in it, and you know that this shoe is built for around your your pace for marathon. Maybe you're a little faster than that. I think that yeah, it's it's definitely right in my range. The Solomon, <laughs> the Solomon Spectre is built for me. <laughs> yeah, like so, but like if it came to race day, and you just felt that bounce. And that, that pop from the airbags and everything like that. I mean, that's what that's is very hard to get past that because you essentially have to have faith in what Solomon's telling you, which yeah. is that this is actually better. And because, what runner has faith in themselves? Yeah, because <laughs> magic, the because like the actual feel that like magical pop, that is, you can only get that in certain shoes. And, and there's only one shoe. Well, yeah. I mean, but I'm saying the this isn't a full Peeba midsole. So it's like you, yeah. to get that full Peeba carbon plate feel, you're going to get that in certain shoes. And the, over the long run, maybe they're not as efficient or for slower runners, you know what I mean? Because it may be not as much cushion or whatever, but it's hard to get past that magic feeling of a true, like super lightweight Peeba carbon plate, yeah. you know? Um, so that's it. I don't know. I, because this could be the better shoe. But I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like know. this one. I love running in it. And honestly, I, I would, if they were like, if someone told me I had to run a month and I could only use one shoe, I'd probably do this one. The, mm -hmm. the thing about it is that, okay, there's another pro well, not problem, but hurdle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 250 bucks, right? Yeah. At least I can't remember if it's 250 or 275, but it's in the same range as all the other shoes. So ideally like, I almost want to run in this every day. It's almost like a fun, like one of them super trainers that we talk about. Yeah. It feels great under the foot. It rolls. It gets smooth. Once you lock into the pace, it's great. The upper fits really nicely. I just, I like it. Like I, I want to run it all the time. Yeah. Not, not, and I think I would probably want to switch out on race day to something, even though I believe, I believe what they're telling me compared to the S lab phantasm. Yeah. I, I will bet you that if those two, I had like race day. Yeah, I could see, I would probably pick this shoe. Yeah. Because I think the Phantasm might be
beat me up over aggressive. Yeah. So, but you know, that's, that's the case, but I do, this is by far the best Solomon shoe I've ever run. Oh, definitely. That's not even a question. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see. I'm definitely going to get more miles in it. It's a nice, do you think people will be able to get over that hurdle? I don't know. I, I don't know. I hope, I hope so, but I don't know. But again, if you're just looking, if you are someone, again, somebody who buys a shoe that they want to wear for race day, maybe wear it afterwards. It's going to last longer than just straight Peebo to, I think, yeah, yeah this is a, you can I have, just do everything. I have 30 miles on these. And while there's some dirt on the upper, mostly because we ran on that uh, dirt Lady trails Trail. of Ladybird. That was kind of muddy. In Austin. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks a little beat up from weather and, and running the trails. Um, but, but other than that, yeah. like the rubber is clean. The foam feels great. All right. Well, anyways, I think that's a pretty good overview of that shoe. Yeah. I can't remember when it comes out. I think in the spring. I should know this. You would hope so if they gave it to us and said we could talk about it. Yeah. It's not too far away. All right. First check in. Man, I don't want to spoil anything. We're going to have Megan on next week. But I got to tell you, it takes some guts to go after big goals and even more to do it publicly. And even though Megan didn't throw out there that she was going to be doing CIM, a lot of people figured it out. And a lot of people know what her goal is right now. And, uh, you know, it can be very stressful. But what I want to tell you is sometimes throwing a goal out there and having everybody know what it is makes you try just a little bit harder and work for it because you know that people are watching. And if that works for you, do it and state your goal. Go after it. I remember the first time I ran a marathon, I made sure everybody I knew knew that I was going to try to run a marathon because I wasn't sure I could do it. Now, several marathons later, you know, it worked out. Uh, anyways, let's move on to some other stuff, especially the running event. So we got the shoe. We ran in it. We ran in the Lady Bird Trail. Beautiful day out that afternoon. Then we headed over to a Mizuno event, Mizuno running. Um, we saw some stuff that we can talk about. Yeah. We saw some stuff we can talk I mean, about. We saw stuff that was three years away. Yeah. Two the, or three years away. I will say that the update to the um, to their race day shoe looks promising. Yeah, the Rebellion Pro was pretty awesome the first time around, but the toe was way too short, narrow, whatever. Uh, so our feet got smashed. In the those. volume of the toe box was low. But they've apparently fixed that in the second version. And they made it more aggressive. Yeah, the midsole... So they do that thing where they cut the heel out and then the midsole is actually, they, they told me it was 52 millimeters. Yeah. Um, so you have a 52 millimeter stack height that skirts the world athletic rules because they don't measure it at that point. Here's the thing that's crazy about that though. Like they've proven that extending your leg length with the foams does not give you an advantage. Uh, what do you mean? Like, so one of the problems they were saying about stack was that it was creating a longer leg for you so that you could actually, oh yeah, you know, benefit from a longer stride. And now they're saying that's not the case. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I mean, more more cushion, more response. I don't know. It seems to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess it just depends. I mean, the landing area on that shoe is very small. You got to land midfoot, and the right. turnover is quick. So that's where I think the benefit comes from. Yeah. Is, a really fast turnover. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so the Rebellion Pro 2 looks pretty solid. They have another, they have a super trainer coming out, I think in June. They're not, we're not allowed to say the name for whatever reason, but we're allowed to show, show it to pictures you. of it. It looks pretty, pretty sweet. I and slipped it, it on. It felt great. No, it felt really good. Um, it, kind of surprising. I would also say some of the stuff, maybe I'm like, they're a couple years behind catching up to people. I mean, this case yeah, in point. Get this stuff out now. They're coming out of the Super Trainer in June, which New Balance has had for two years. It does. Like, that's where I think the their problem is going to come in. It's not. It's too close to what's already available. And right. they need to get it out now. Right. Because. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's good to see that they're finally, like, coming, you know, coming around to it. And I think recognizing some of that stuff that they need to catch up what i did think was strange was we were there with a bunch of retailers 
And the retailers ask for the exact opposite of what we want. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They want, you know how, like, I, th I feel like they have a client that comes in and says, I got the Wave Inspire one, mm -hmm. I got the two, the mm -hmm. three, the four. I come back in every year and just pick up the update. Right. I feel like that's what those running stores want is that consistent yeah. model that they can just keep putting on someone's feet, especially if that person doesn't want to try new things. Well, everything is kind of going bigger. And even some people were like, <laughs> can you ensure less that there's, there's going to be a less foam shoe, which I do think is going to come back around but probably not in the way that uh, an old Mizuno shoe. No. It's going to be a little bit different. I mean, I think we've seen that shoes that we can't talk about, but maybe in Adidas, from Adidas, like some more shoes that bring it back to like the the, the more old school looking. I mean, they, Adidas always offers for in the Adi Zero, and we went and visited with Adidas as well. And they we'll should talk about. Yeah, they showed us. You know, you have a race day shoe for just about everybody from the Takumi Sen to the Adios to the Adios Pro 4. Mm -hmm. You There's a shoe stack height and distance for every runner. And then, I mean, you still have the Prime X2. Yeah. And stuff. Some people will use that for uh, racing as well. But, yeah, so after the Mizuno thing, we headed over. I mean, we got tacos first. Did one taco or something like yeah. that? Yeah. I don't know. I had tacos too many times. And yeah, I went to the bathroom too many times because of those tacos. It was all taco related. Yeah, it was. I don't know what's going, what was going on in Texas, but it there were some for you. there were some situations <laughs> that required a. Uh, I can assure you that everything is indeed bigger in Texas. Wow, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, and then there was a hoka party that night. <laughs> I was trying to work that freeze right, in there somewhere. It. Well, you did it <laughs> in the worst way possible. You could have done it with like shoe stack in the worst. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> facts. Yeah. The, uh, and then we went to a hookup party. I was kind of tapped out by that point. Now, Megan's chilling at this at this point. She's not doing the social stuff because she's resting up for a CIM. I go to the hookup thing with Carl and Robbie, and it was cool, but I, I just wasn't in the mood. Like, I checked it out. The coolest thing I saw there, besides some people, um, was the was it Jim Walmsley's shoe. Um, yeah, that he wore for UTMB. Yeah. And then they had the version, which you're going to get excited about, the Tecton X3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. It looks like a total departure, though. Yeah, it's not even this near the same shoe as the one and the two, which were some of our, some of our favorite trail shoes of the last couple of years. But, yeah, we hung out that, at that party. I was just trying to get in on that free food. Even though I just ate, there's still free food. You got to eat it. See, it probably wasn't the tacos. Uh, no, it Trust me. It wasn't the mushroom crostinis. Oh, jeez. That didn't do it. Those are good. Peanut butter cookies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of people at that party. And then, which, by the way, if you're ever just trying to get in parties, just walk into the ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no one. No one knows. It was huge, though. It was almost too big. Like, because, like, you, I felt like you couldn't. Like it created so much space that it was like, if you wanted to socialize with someone else, you had to like walk 20 yards. Um, yeah, there was, it was kind of nice cause I got to get lost in there. And so you couldn't find me, but you eventually, eventually found me. And then I'd left. Yep. And anyway, so then we, the next day was the running event and the first day of the running event. Well, we got up early. We went for a run. Oh yeah. Did we? I didn't, you did. What day did you and Taylor meet us out there? Was said, that the, ta said taco problem. Was that the following day that you and Taylor met us out there? Um, yeah, that was Thursday. Friday. You went with Megan and Megan on Wednesday. Oh, that's morning. right. I went with uh, and Jess Movald. And it's crazy because Meg Featherston was there, and I saw her for all of one minute. Yeah, I I spent a lot of time with her because we went to the gutter party mm -hmm. together as well. Oh. oh yeah, that's right. Did, where were you? Oh, because you went to the other party. We'll get to that. Okay. Anyway. So we went for a run in the morning. It was kind of cool because Jess Moval, who lives in Austin, who's also the running world coach and did train to NYC with us, came out. She brought a friend and we ran with feathers. And I feel like I'm missing someone else who was there with us. It might have been Taylor. No, it was a woman. Okay. Well, anyways, we went to... Nobody cares. We went to the... Um, Solomon. Sol breakfast. We met up with Solomon to shoot some content around the S-Lab Spectre. And, you know, basically did that and then went headed over to the running event. And 
just so you know, like we said, it's a huge event and it's all, you can imagine a huge convention center booths, booths packed in there. Um, and you're, you have, we had appointments, what, every half hour slash hour where we would go to a booth, film some content, which you can see on YouTube, by the way, where most pretty much all the roundups should be up by now, all the previews of 2024. And meet with a product line manager. You would, you did the road side of things. Typically you were Meg. I did the trail side of things. And, and, we, and when you say um, they'll be up, we did, we even shot videos of stuff that we can't put out yet um yeah 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 so there's like things that coming in 2024 that for s certain reasons stuff like the ring con four <laughs> no we were allowed to shoot that oh the ring con four mm -hmm. yeah. we're allowed to Hoka tell let us that? show everything that was there oh, that's awesome because yeah. like there's two, I, two brands that are cool with that i'm just excited uh -oh. to I, I think that's one of the shoes that people are anticipating yeah hoka and new balance were like go ahead film everything Except for what the rebel? Yeah, I think we can't show the rebel yeah. yet. Which from I, New Balance, I, I don't understand because it looks just like the SC Trainer. <laughs> it's the it's a it's already on the internet. Mm -hmm. B the the it, SC Trainer and uh, Propel. I mean, not Propel. Pacer V two and the Elite. They're all out there, and they all look the same. <laughs> yeah, like. So don't show the rebel. All right. Anyways, if you want to see the rebel. Just stare at the pacer and imagine maybe a little more stack and no plate. Yeah, but we got a bunch of the and the new shoe that they have called the Balo, Balos, Balos, Balos. That's a wild. That's what is that? That's another essentially yeah. super trainer. Probably, probably some country or island <laughs> or something. So they have the yeah. I, I would say that was like aside from the pacer two from New Balance. Which do you think that was the most interesting shoe from New Balance? I have to say it's the best update for sure. Yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, I, I, I know that we got some responses because with the um, fuel cell lineup, they really went strong with this like harsh geometric like Tesla Cybertruck vibe. vibe. And I love it. But we got there's some people that out there that, you know, seem to react negatively towards it. But all of those shoes are the ones that I got excited about. Did, by the way, did you see the Tesla Cybertruck when we were walking to the mm -mm. Brooks party? Mm mm. I caught, I just saw the tail lights of it. Yeah, like I remember everyone, you going, "Hey, look, there's a Tesla truck." It wasn't me. And then I someone looked, else, and someone it was else saw gone. It. Yeah, um, I'm sure we'll see like a thousand. That's probably Joe Rogan, months. right? It very well could have been. Uh, so then we saw. Oh yeah, so the Balos. That's a two hundred dollar, like super trainer coming from New Balance fuel cell, fuel, but not fuel cell. It's in there. A fresh, fresh foam, foam lineup. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it happens to have P-backs in the foam. Yeah, it's a Peba blend. No fuss fit. <laughs> mm. um, I hate a fussy fit. Yeah, sounds like I'm wearing Spanx. And then mm, fussy. the, it has a, it doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. So I guess that's the, it's a super trainer without the carbon fiber plate. What does that remind you of? Mm, <laughs> super blast. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see, but I don't, I know that they're trying to bring another audience to the fresh foam side. Mm -hmm. It does seem strange to me that you would take it out of the fuel cell lineup. Right. And there's also the, the more V5, which is a similar, it just, it's not a people blend. It's just a fresh foam, but that's going to be even crazier. Yeah. I was like with the 1080 V13, so well cushioned that I was like, how are you going to have a more? Yeah. And they made a more. Well, and the Balos, it seems like they're all kind of very similar shoes. Yeah, yeah that is true. The 1080 V13 is already like super cush. I don't know. Hey, you want more? Yeah. I'll give you more. So we, we had a bunch. I don't know. Do you want to walk through each one or do you just kind of want to get the let's highlights? Just, yeah, let's just glaze through. Okay. On the first day, we did Adidas, Saucony. We did um, Ultra. We saw a a six was pointless. Sorry, a six, but it was. I mean, I think they knew that when yeah. we walked up. They're like, "Well, you know, literally nothing." We got to do nothing. the next cumulus, which is on embargo, but not sure why it's on embargo. Like, it's like let's just show it. Yeah, it's like keeping a Toyota Corolla under wraps. <laughs> uh, 
the the last the last year of a we put production run. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the North Face, Diodora. That was it. Diodora, I was kind of excited about. Yeah, there's some cool things from Diodora. It's like I feel like they always put out solid shoes. If any nothing else, they look good. Um, and so I was pretty. I'm always excited to see what they have. Imagine it on my feet at some point. Here's the thing that they, the one I slipped on, I slipped on a couple of them mm -hmm. where I would give Diodora a little bit of a knock in the past is their foams aren't the greatest. Right. And these, the ones that I tried on, they seem to have better tuned foam and I like the way they felt. Yeah. So the Atomo V7 uh, version two is coming as well as a tempo shoe called the Frequenza and then a race day shoe called the Gara. All these Italian words. Yeah, try to remember need a that. Translator. Um, so the North Face had some cool trail stuff coming. They've really upped their game in the trail segment because their shoes honestly kind of sucked for a long time. Kind and of. It's like straight up. Yeah, it was like it, honestly, it was. De it was. I feel like a little bit of a brought their brand down a little bit. In the well, I th you notice they don't have the trail series anymore. I think it was because. Everybody who ran the trail series ran in non North Face shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they like they lost a lot of their athletes too. Like uh, you know, our buddy uh, Michael Wardian was a North Face athlete. Oh, okay. At one point, and they let him run roads in Nikes and stuff because they didn't have a road shoe. Who's the other one? Rob Rob Carr was a Rob Carr, yeah, North Face guy. But anyways, they are the shoes that they have now are definitely stepping it up. Taylor's worn a few of them are head trail reviewer for the past few months in and out. And he loves pretty much all the models they're coming out with. So that's cool. Um, it's weird. Cause you could say head trail reviewer. You could say trail head reviewer. Trail, yeah, it's true. It's interchangeable. Yeah. Flip flop that. Flip flop. So then the, the other, some other exciting stuff that we saw today was, I feel like some things from Adidas. I guess we can't talk about some of them. Yeah, we can. I mean, can we mention what we saw? I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised that there's new versions of shoes coming out. Yeah. We're not I'm, showing them. That's probably fine. I guess we'll find I'll out. just say this. The Adi Zero line is looking fire. Uh, what they're doing, they're taking some of the stuff from the Evo and meshing it into the rest of the line, which is great. Yeah. Which is kind of what we expected. We kind of expected, okay, we're going to see the top line here and then some of this technology trickle down into the other shoes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we saw they're really making a push back into the sport. They're aware that they kind of let things slip with the daily trainers. Like they had race day covered, but they didn't have like, like you weren't training in Adidas and then wearing Adidas on race day. Right. You were just wearing Adidas on race day if you liked you know, the pro, but you might, you're probably training in a different shoe. Yeah. So they're trying to make an effort to get back in that way. And they have a, like a lot of shoes coming. I yeah. mean, we have to test them. I haven't worn the supernova. Any of the, there's a couple of different supernova shoes coming out. There's Liam Gallagher would be proud. There's the, and some Audi Star models that look way better than the Audi Star things we've seen before. Well, they're definitely better. The big chunk on the back is gone. The foam is softer. Mm -hmm. Like it's they it's a true yeah, long distance daily trainer. Yeah, and then we have so, some other stuff that not super stoked on. Saucony they just showed us our their basic models like the Tempest, which is just an upper update. Same thing with the Kimbara 15 and then there's the Triumph 22, which has some power on PB in it, a little bit more midsole. And then the Hurricane 24, which is bring, coming back. Cool. We, for whatever reason, weren't allowed to talk about or show the Endorphin Speed and Endorphin Pro 4. Which we already have and are running in. Everybody knows is coming out. So, and I wish we could have talked about them because they're actually pretty exciting. Um... Yeah, so that's still coming down the road. And then we had Ultra, which, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think. The the Vanish Carbon 2 from Ultra looks pretty rad. Mm -hmm. That actually does look nice. They're doing some, the they have the forward experience and they have the experience form. They're 
working in that experience realm with some new If it shoes. says experience, it means it's got to drop. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then Escalante Racer 2, which looks... It's, they're like they're bringing that back because I think the hardcore ultra people really loved yeah. the Escalante. That it's kind of like if you could bring the Brooks Green Silence back, all yeah. those people there are like, oh, that's the shoe. Yeah, so that's a pretty minimal racer, just a straight up racing flat with that wide open knit upper. There's, it's got like a maybe seventeen millimeter stack. It said twenty two. A twenty two, but yeah, right. but that's full. I mean, low. that's a full stack, so yeah. that's pretty low. So I think. Ultra, hardcore ultra people are really going to like that because I always do see people comments about people wanting to bring back their Escalante racers. So, and good, good move for them. Good, good job listening to your consumer. And then, yeah, that was pretty much the, it for day one. But uh, then there was the parties. Yeah. So I'm trying to think. You went to happened. dinner with article one, article one and Rourke running because they're just cool people. Yeah, I don't know. I went someplace with Feathers. Oh, I, th I'm, I can't remember if maybe I got dinner with Megan and, and Feathers. Mm -hmm. And then Feathers and I headed over to uh, Gooder, the Gooder party. Yeah. Yeah. She rode a shark. Oh, she did get on that? She thing? got on. Well, dude, I'll show you the video. She thought she was on there for a while. It basically did <laughs> one turn. She fell off. So they had a roadie, uh, what do you call it? Mechanical, mechanical bull shark. Yeah, but it was, instead of a bull, it was a sh shark with like a inflatable pit around it. Yeah, so when you fall, you don't get hurt. How long was she on it for? Literally, it started up, it turned this way, and then it turned back <laughs> around this way. And when it went to turn back, she fell off. Man, we did see that one person that was on it for a pretty long, good seven. I think they did, what's the eight seconds is the bull oh, riding? Oh, is it? I think, okay. I think eight seconds is the standard. Isn't there a movie called that? Did, did you see people hug it? Um, like wrap their front legs and back Yeah, legs it looked it? like they were trying to get that thing pregnant. I know, it looks ridiculous. Which is like, I don't think you want to get an inflatable shark. But yeah, they handed out a new gooder frame to everybody who walked in. I thought I'd, at the in the evening, I had had a couple drinks. And they were just- Define a couple. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's where I went. <laughs> yes. I, w I started off the evening- um, at Fleming Steakhouse where I thought I wanted to get a steak and then I got there and I just had a wedge salad and two martinis. That should, yeah. That but should that's after, so at the end of the day at the running event, they kind of have like happy hour where the different booths have like beer stations. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple beers there and a ranch water. <laughs> then we stopped and I uh, got a couple martinis at Fleming's and then we dropped Megan off and Feathers and I went to the Gooder party and immediately they had drinks, so we had drinks there. But I try, they were giving out the sunglasses, is my point. And yeah. uh, I thought they looked good on me, uh, you know, at that point. Yeah. Because they were just black. And I grabbed a pair for Megan on the way out. And then I saw them the next day on me, and I gave both to Megan. Oh, you had them? Yeah. <laughs> they were a little, they were a little, um, they were a little... They made me look like a crazy woman. You don't say. Yeah, like they had almost a little point mm -hmm. at the top. Oh, like cat eye ones? A little bit like cat eye, yeah. Yeah. So Megan got a black pair and a white pair. Uh, nice. So now she looks like a crazy woman? Well, no, because she is a woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think what looked crazy was me as, in, as a woman. Yeah, kind of like a Liz Taylor look for... Thomas Newberger. Yeah, it didn't really, it didn't really <laughs> didn't jive. Translate. It, yeah, it wasn't, um, wasn't a great look. Have you ever seen that Chappelle skit where um, it's like hanging out with white people like after they party? No. I, I was trying to look it up to make sure I got the quotes right. But he's basically like, would you, uh, it's like when you recap, when white, white people love to recap their drinking escapades where it's like, <laughs> Two shots of Jaeger, tequila, four bong hits, beer, <laughs> cheeseburger. <laughs> That's pretty much which it. Is, which is accurate. I feel like I do that all the time. Second check-in. Let's talk about big goals for 2024 because it's the end of the year. And that's when people make big goals. Hopefully, you're running grit and you have a goal to start off January. But if you're not, or even if you are, you should be thinking about what you want 24 to look like, what things you want to accomplish, 
what would be meaningful to you in running or in regular life and how they mesh together. So maybe on this run, think about what you want 2024 to look like. Yeah. Um, and you guys came to the party, but by the time you guys got there, I think I was ready to go. Uh, oh yeah, dude. When I got to the gooder party, I could see you were looking past me, dude. Like you, you were looking at a different version of me that was maybe 10 seconds behind my original version. Like, uh, like trails. Yeah. It was like my vapor trail was who you were following, but not really. You weren't that hammered, but I could tell you were having a good time. Yeah. I had a great time. Um, <laughs> and I got there and I, I did have, uh, two margaritas at the place we were at before at Loro, which was a very good restaurant in Austin. They had, um, like, you know, smoked beef or whatever brisket and then some Barbecue? others. Yeah. Some other sides and stuff like that. And kind of just an assortment of little plates that they had at this thing. We were there, we were there for, and it was, it was very good, but I had those two drinks and it, I felt, fine felt good and so we, when i got to the party i felt like you were a little disappointed because i just got an athletic beer <laughs> <laughs> just like, but and then you got a tequila and soda and i tasted that and i was like yeah i think you'll be okay after this <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i didn't sleep the greatest that night i was honestly shocked when I saw you up and running the next day at 5 45 a.m that's see that's my my I cure, like it, I will almost, there's two things I do. I will punish myself for, for getting out of hand. So that's part of the punishment. <laughs> All right. You're going to go for a run. Yeah. And two, like if I had not gone for a run and gone straight to the floor of the convention center, I would have had that hot drunk leftover oh, yeah, feel dude. all day. I know that. So I need to sweat it out, restart, pound some coffee, eat some eggs, potatoes, all that stuff. And I was good to go. You were good to go? I was good I to go. I just don't understand. I would have been still wrecked, I think. Even and after the run? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just would have wanted to take a nap probably. And that's probably what I would have done somewhere in the, with that, probably find that sloth and cuddle up or something. Mm. I don't know. Jackie. I don't know if that's legal. It's legal in Texas probably. I mean, just they had, up with they the had sloth. Jackie work on the floor. Yeah. She was too. She knew what she was doing. Yeah. But the making eyes, <laughs> yeah, showing me her toes. I thought Jarrett was gonna lose his mind. Like I saw him over there talking to Jackie like five or six different times. I'm, I was there a couple of times. I asked. I was doing my twenty questions game, trying to figure out all the details about how to get a sloth for a pet. But I don't oh, think you can. Can you? You can actually. So mm. don't How's think sloth? don't think I haven't been googling that a little bit. Okay, I want to know though, like. Where does the sloth go to the bathroom and how often? So she was saying they actually don't burp or fart, which is crazy to me. Mm, so she was the one making all those noises? Yeah, it was just me. <laughs> I, was trying to, I was trying to blame it on the sloth and it didn't work out. She's like, sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. That's not what's happening here. And, um, I, but apparently they never touch the ground, which seems so like ever. Did you want to put it on the ground just to see? Uh, yeah, because I went to maybe free its mind, expand like, it a little bit. Yeah, what if it, what if I was the next step in the evolutionary process? I put that sloth on the ground, and suddenly things started happening. That would be cool. Yeah, uh -huh. it started finally realizing it can grow feet. Mm. But anyways, so then that sloth was you know having a good time, and then oh, I saw that raccoon the night before in the dumpster. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you posted the picture. That raccoon was. If you're watching the podcast, you're probably seeing the raccoon. Yeah, I've, you know, seen raccoons in real life. He real life tame. may have fed some out of my hand at some point on an island before. Uh, Raccoon once, island. Once they get on an island, they can't get off. They're not swimming to another island. Mm, I unless never it's thought about that. A very low tide. I. Where is this island? In the Everglades. Mm. There's just. How do they get there? I don't know if someone brought it. Brought maybe a couple on as. Um, a joke? Maybe their first and second mate on a... Yeah, on a boat. Yeah. And then like they it. just kind of decide to live there. But they, they will come up to you. All right. So we make it to day two. Another whirlwind day. 
Mm-hmm. Who did we see on day two? I know that we saw Brooks. Yeah, I mean, I'll pull up the list here. Brooks, Nike, Solomon, on. I have to say, I believe that at some point, Brooks will be back on the nice list. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think there's starting to come around. Uh, the other ones were Kraft, Reebok, Puma, Ve- Veja. Veja was surprising. About. Yeah. And then Topo Athletic. All right. And On is going to continue to to wow you this year, I think. On's really taking it to the next level. Yeah, I, I'm really. They're on. The, uh, that was too easy. That was easy. It was um, almost lazy. Uh, the monster's getting an update. Yep. And there's a monster hyper. Yeah. I can't tell you what that means, but both look exciting. Yeah, everything they're doing looks pretty awesome. This The stuff that we've seen and seen I coming. still like the original monster. I do too. I just don't like the upper on that shoe. I feel I like it's, it's just not much there. I mean, I don't know. I just Look, didn't think there's the least. Adi star right behind you. Yeah, that thing's crazy. Yeah. That thing is scary, man. It looks like a cinder block. And- I would have been looking all over the house for that. Uh, yeah. Um, but I would say that on that day, things on looked very cool. We also saw Puma. Yeah. I, oh, you got that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Puma. What? I'm trying to think of what the other stuff that looked the coolest. Brooks. Nike. Brooks Hyperion Max 2 looks pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah. Hyperion Max 2. I have to say also, I am sometimes influenced by color and stuff like that. And their color pack for the Olympics and the Olympic trials is is pretty, I like it a lot. Yeah. And I would, yeah, yeah, it looks good. I think the Brooks Trail stuff is looking good. The Catamount. Ooh, that one what was a one Brooks a uh, trail shoe that looked kind of thin. The guy was even wearing them on his feet. Uh, it looked like a sweet, like nimble trail shoe. Oh, it's their, oh man. I don't even know if we took notes on that because no one else, I think I was talking to him. I'm not sure that anyone took notes mm. on that. Yep. It was, it's their true trail racing shoe. It's super lightweight, super fast. Um, It looked sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what it's called, but it's really nice to want some races and stuff like that. It's basically almost like a track spike in a trail shoe. And so Brooks has some cool stuff coming. Obviously the Hyperion Elite 4, which I feel like we've seen everywhere. Everyone's seen at this point. That's coming in February, February 1st. Uh, Hyperion Max 2, which is it uh, comes out in June-ish. That's $180. They have a P-Bax plate in that shoe now. So that's the whole thing with that. Yeah. The Hyperion itself, so it's a Hyperion 2 mm-hmm. because Hyperion Tempo, then Hyperion, right. and then now Hyperion 2. It looks promising. Yeah. I mean, everything looks um, pretty nice coming from Brooks. And then we have the, I forgot to say we did Adidas Terex the first day too. So I got the shoe the Tarek Speed Ultra, which is the shoe that oh, they gave it to you. That's right. That Tom Evans wore when he won Western States this past year. That thing looks sick. I haven't run in it yet because I'm terrified of it. But no. I'm kind of curious. Well, I know why you're terrified. You think you're going to twist your ankle, but it's going to happen. I just got to resign myself to the fact. I want to know how happen. it'll do against the Ultra Fly. Uh, I can already tell that it, the upper fits better than the Ultra Fly. Uh-oh. So, um. In terms of, and it's going to be, it's just a fat, you can just tell it's a faster shoe. The Ultra Fly is- Dude, the rocker on it is insane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's basically a U. Yeah. If you, there's a picture, I guess it was showed on the screen. Yeah. It looks crazy, but very nice shoe. Um, I'm sure we'll see about a lot of that on the, uh, continue, can you continue to see that, that on the Terex athletes and a lot of people running trail races. So that's a pretty sweet shoe. Then we got the- there's, so there's the Agravic or Agravic line from Adidas Terex. So there's three shoes in that line, including the Speed Ultra. Um, and then I felt like the that day, so the Puma, yeah. What did you think of the Puma updates? I mean, I was only there. I didn't really see all the road updates, so you might have to fill me in because I saw the Fast Art 2, of course, which has that little... 
we got the Velocity 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, we looked at all the race day shoes, and the Fast R was one of them. Yeah. I I mean, I... The, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know where the market is for the shoe, for the Fast R. Like, I think you're going to have... You're gonna have to convince someone to get in this race day shoe for starters, and then it is kind of different looking. Yeah, what's different about the Fast R two than the Fast R besides that extended carbon plate that goes beyond the toe? They also softened up the heel a little bit. So before it had two different foams in the heel, right? Uh, the heel and the forefoot, and I believe that they're now both the same foam. One is tu- the heel is tuned a little firmer. Okay. Then the front, but it seemed like a lot softer. So I think you're going to get a smoother ride out of it. Okay. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's a full plate. It's definitely like, I don't know. I, what did you think of the look of it? I mean, it, I don't, I actually think it looks kind of cool when people are running in it. It's definitely weird. Yeah. But like as a consumer, Someone was dropping two seventy five, three hundred dollars on a pair of race day shoes. Yeah, are you going to take the gamble? Mm. Is it two seven? How much is it? I think it's it. I think it might be two twenty five. It might be. Yeah, maybe it's two fifty. I don't know. It's in the super yeah. shoe yeah, range. Yeah. We can look that. I up. don't know. It's hard to say. <sighs> yeah, I mean, if you want something that stands out and looks interesting, I think you got it right there. Yeah. I just don't see it. Like when I was at Chicago, the only people I saw in a Puma race day shoe were Puma athletes. Well, that's also probably because nobody could buy a Puma shoe apparently for like two years. That would help. I love how, I don't know what the hell is going on with their supply chain, but trying to get a Puma shoe. Remember when Molly Seidel won the bronze and it was impossible to buy that shoe for three months? Yeah. I, I mean, mean I know uh, it's COVID, the, but the update to that shoe is pretty sweet. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that one. Oh, I didn't even, I don't even think I saw the update to that. It, you saw it. You probably didn't notice it because it looks similar to like all, all the other Puma shoes, um, and... except for the fast R. Okay, cool. Well, I would say, I mean, I feel like every year though, Puma is exciting to me. And then the shoes either don't come out or come out way later, or we just never get the samples or what happens. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I know I'm we'll just, get the Velocity 3. I did like the Magnafly. Um, mm-hmm. Then we got the more uh, stacked one. The shoes are good. I It's tough right now because I feel like every brand is catching up. Like, they were one of the first ones to use a super critical foam in all their shoes. Right. And they've tuned the phone. It's foam. It's gotten better. But now, I mean, everybody, including, you know, Saucony is using Piba in all their shoes. Mm. Uh, even Adidas is doing stuff with foams. And you know, everybody has, I mean, New Balance is throwing yeah. it in their uh yeah, at some Fresh point it's just going to be in Cuba. every. It's just going to be in everything. So it's like you got to have something extra, and I think that we could talk about Puma. Puma, I think their pricing is usually pretty good. Style, true, hit or miss. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like how are you going to lure someone away from, say, uh, one of the big, big three? Yeah, no, I'm with you on that one. Um, and then of course. We had a couple other ones. Solomon had a bunch of shoes coming in both road and trail. Pretty solid. Usually. It is. I do get their naming conventions. I don't like. That's like, why I'm not even going to try and go for it because I. It's, there's glides. There's rides. There's ultra lights. <laughs> there's stuff. But the worst part I think for me is there was a Spectre mm-hmm. that is not an S Lab Spectre. That's what I. Yeah. So you have a shoe that looks like this shoe that's named like this shoe that is not this shoe. That's what a hundred dollars less. Yeah. And it's got, <laughs> it, you know, the foams aren't the same and the plates not the same, but it's basically what they do is they take this and they say, okay, I'm going to put everything in this top of the line and then take off the S lab name and we'll use all the same yeah. molds, all the same stuff, but cheaper components. Yeah. It's like buying, 
non SL, like buying them. The and like, yeah. And if you're and if you're a normal consumer who's just going to buy shoes and you see someone says you should get the Spectre, or if they say S L Spectre and they're like, oh, it's only 150 bucks, they're gonna buy it. Right. I don't know. That's what drives me crazy. But so th their naming convention is uh, not my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, Topo, so Topo Athletic, speaking of Spectre, they also have a shoe called the Spectre, mm. which spelled differently. That's why I, w I think one time when you were talking about the Spectre, I'm like, why, why would we be having that? I think you said we were going to show it on the show today. And I was like, why are we showing <laughs> a Topo Athletic Spectre for today? But it's a different one and it's spelled S P E C T R E. And they have a second version of that shoe coming out that looks pretty sweet because what they did with the Cyclone 2, having that P P Bax midsole. Yeah, Tony was like, that is because I said P B and he's like, no, that's P Bax. It's our own special uh formulation and extraction pellets. Uh, yeah. So they've got their own Yeah. But it's P Bax yeah. officially. Branded. Yeah. And so they're gonna they have a trainer version that's like seven and a half ounces or something ridiculous and pretty thick midsole it could be pretty sweet so looking forward to that one too um and then the Ve uh veja this was my biggest surprise veja or veja why do i always get it's that veja wrong? veja okay i got it right v-e-j-a yeah from france you've seen them on probably some rich moms outside i don't know you mostly see the ones that look City. like stan smith yeah. It's, but it's got the V. They're vegan and they're made from like sustainable stuff. Right? Yeah, it's all that lots of beans and Caster beans. I don't know, things you'd find maybe in a commune mm -hmm. that are turned into a shoe. I feel like that's the best way to describe it. And they felt it. like it. Like up until now, every shoe that we got from them was just brutal on your feet. Oh, yeah. They said they had running shoes before. I'm like running from where a fire in an emergency. I run from those shoes. Yeah. That's the only thing. <laughs> exactly. And maybe they are just missing a word in their marketing materials, but the condor that they had before it was, I, we didn't review it cause it was so bad. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we gave feedback. Pretty sure I gave that away within two weeks of getting it. And cause it didn't even look good either. <laughs> Sorry. It's, <laughs> it's true. But then the they have the Condor 3. And it looks like a Air Max. It looks amazing. Yeah, I think it's still under embargo, but whatever. I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. And it- The it, midsole felt like a running shoe. It felt great, yeah. And I, like, course, I don't, do, was it, let's, let's step, take a step back. I put it on and I was like, wow, this feels amazing. But I was expecting the brick that right. we normally had. So do you think it's amazing or do you think we're just like- Oh, it doesn't suck. I th I don't know if it's an amazing, but I do think it's a legitimately okay. This is a this can be a running shoe. Can it? Yeah, be, you could definitely run it. Now I don't know how it compared to say something like the Tracksmith Elliott Runner, which is it's basically that's the competition you're looking at. Cause, it would be the same person, yeah, because it's a similar type person. I mean, the Veja, the Condor Three. It's not like you're wearing it for a twenty mile run. You maybe you could, but. That's not the main purpose of it. You're running to Starbucks. Yeah. You're going to Lululemon. But I don't know. I'm interested to see because I feel like first step in it felt really nice, better than maybe the Elliot. So and I thought it looked amazing. And it looks great. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see that. I always am a big fan of when somebody who makes terrible shoes. Turns it around. Turns it around and makes a good shoe. So. I mean, that was my favorite with Asics a few years back. Mm -hmm. Like it is the... You think that like we just randomly crap on shoes. We don't. And we really do want a better shoe. And when, when the shoe comes along and turns, you know, they like there's some shoes that we thought we'd never see again. And then boom, on came out with shoes that we liked after years of not liking their shoes. Yep. I'm hoping I, you know, from talking to the people at Brooks that maybe there's some stuff on the horizon that I'm going to be excited about. Mm hmm so yeah and then i'm trying to think of what other oh we saw a reebok craft which craft had a very cool i think it's called the enduro i feel like all their shoes are gravel bikes 
It does feel like that. It's like you could run on the road, you could run on the trail. Yeah. So they have a shoe called the Explore Hybrid, again, a hybrid shoe. That's, I think it's supposed to be mostly road, but it definitely has some trail element type things for it that look really cool though. And has a rubber outsole. That's I love that David Delaney's there all the time. Or And did I just add a Delane? Yeah, you added a, it's not yeah, like I always want to call him David Del- Delaney. Yeah. It's just sense. David Laney. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's always there. Is he, is he part of development at this point? Kind of. So he has, he has a contract with them as an athlete, as an ultra runner, but he has a separate contract as an employee. Oh, cool. So he has two, he's working for them, but also sponsored athlete, which he's is just cool. a nice guy. Oh, he's like the coolest dude ever. Yeah. He is. So, he's so nice and chill. I'm, I'm just like, I want to be around you more to experience the vibes, the chill life. Yeah. So he, he was cool in breaking down the shoes for us. And, uh, the other two they had were like the craft pacer and then, which also looked like a nice fun shoe. And then the endurance too, which is just an upper update. So um, if you were going to list, what's one of the brands that you were most excited about after seeing them at, at the running event? I'd have to say ref- reflecting back on the whole thing, most excited about, I would say on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. On Adidas. We didn't talk about Nike, but there wasn't much new. They showed us stuff we already seen. So we did a rundown of the Alpha Fly 3. That's the most exciting thing. Yeah. Go, like right now. It, here's the thing. I kind of feel like there's the Alpha Fly 3 and there's everything else. <laughs> right. Now I will say we did do Nike Trail and they have the Zagama 2 coming, which I'm wearing the Zagama 1 right now. And the only... That was a great shoe, except for the outsole kind of sucked on it. So I'm there. You put a Vibram outsole on it now, which is amazing and awesome. Why did it take so long? Right. Yeah. And then uh, Peg Trail 5 is coming. Now that doesn't have Vibram, Vibram outsole, but apparently they have a reformulated rubber compound that they worked with in their lab. I think the point is they knew their outsole sucked and they're finally at least changing it. So the Zagama looks really exciting on the trail side. As does the Peg Trail, the last couple versions have been amazing as far as fit and comfort and just general use. So the one thing I was a little disappointed with, we didn't see anything that I really want to see. I want to see the Peg Forty One, which we've seen pictures of now. Yeah, the day after we leave TRE and the Turbo. Yeah, the new. Yeah, exactly. The return of the Peg Turbo. Yeah, those two are probably. To our audience, two of the most important shoes. Yeah. I mean, your peg, an update to the peg and bringing, I feel like the peg has slipped at least last year. I thought the last two years, I thought it was not the greatest. For and sure. I, I feel like it is what it is. It's a great basic, like you would say, Toyota Corolla uh, style shoe. But I think it has potential to be so much more. Mm-hmm. And then the turbo I love the turbo. I'd love to see the turbo come back. I love that they brought the stripe back. I know you don't. I just, it looks like a bowling shoe to me. <laughs> I get it, but it's just so distinctive. Like you see I that mean, it shoe is. and you're like, that's the Nike turbo. But the green, the original peg turbo looked awesome. <laughs> the, the one, no, the, you're thinking of the second. That was number two. The first no, one you're was right. that the is a second. pale okay. blue with yeah. the stripe. I'm talking the green one. Yeah, I do brown. love that. Like the lizard. <laughs> yeah. But I still have both those. I love them both. Yeah. I should wear that again. See if I'm just. No, I wore it. I, I wore it recently. Yeah. And I was like, this is really a good shoe. Okay. I mean, it's just ZoomX. Right? Yeah. ZoomX with, a, a, I think I had the Lunar Lawn mm-hmm. or Kush Lawn sandwich. Yeah. But so yeah. that's com- that's coming again. And you're right. It does suck that we'll go there and some of the most exciting things things that we know are coming, things that are on Reddit all over the place. We don't get to see or talk about or even shelve for a future video. Some things we do, we did record and have put on the shelf, like pretty much all the on stuff. I feel like what's happening 
with some of the brands because the event has gotten more popular and you have more people just walking around snapping pictures and stuff. It's not just retailers. Right. That they're, we're going to see less and less of what they, what's going to maybe be exciting to us. Just show it to me, man. Yeah. I know that, pic, I know the pic turbo was there somewhere. Oh, it's there. <laughs> Remember when, I mean, last year we got in the van and they whipped out. So, some sounds, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like we were, being trafficked. Yeah. I saw uh, <laughs> last year they told us to get in the van and it, we'll we're show off in Portland. Stuff. They had one mean lady in there. Yeah. I didn't remember her. Yeah. Well, so last year they didn't have their PR team there last year. That's why. Yeah. There was just people, angry employees. Yeah. This year they stopped taking pictures. This year they had <laughs> the A, the uh, A team on it. Yeah. Which I think they actually said this was basically why they were. Be, because it's become such a media spectacle, I think they had to have PR on hand to make sure things were running smoothly. Uh, but yeah, I would say, so the, in terms of the exciting stuff, obviously the Alpha Fly 3, then the- Which Meg ran CIM in. Yep, which by the way, Meg, Meg's not in on this podcast, but we're gonna have recap her CIM and everything else in another one. She's just- I said that at the beginning. You did? It's going to be the Monday episode. Okay. I didn't realize it. I might have, must have been It was a long time ago. I think ago. I was spacing on that It was that a long part. time ago. I didn't know if you said she was going to be on the episode. She's basically going to be our guest. Um, I'm going to grill her. You know what she's doing right now? She's drinking wine in Napa Valley. Dude, I'm going to ask her about All Time Low during her podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, what's your, uh, tell me about All Time Low. What's your connection there? She's going to say, um, Let's just talk about CIM, Robbie, and keep it. <laughs> no way, man. This keep is, it on point. This is in depth behind the music. Uh, yeah. What's that drug that you give people so they have to tell the truth? Uh, just truth serum. Yeah. Or is there an actual drug? I, I think there's an actual drug. Okay. I think that's uh, might be dangerous though. We I think might it's, not want to go down that lane. I think it's four locos. Yeah, four loco. <laughs> uh, all right. So I would say the other exciting things. On, well, I could just oh, let me give you on one. Which was there anything that around. was not exciting? You mentioned one already. You said that uh, A6 was, we'd already seen everything. Uh, I thought the Reebok was strange that the shoe that we were seeing was the shoe that we saw last year. Yeah, it was weird. It, that was weird. And they have the float zig, I which actually looks kind of cool, at least for casual wear, I think. I don't know. Not sure how to work in actual running performance, but they have three or four different shoes on the float zig design. I don't know. Could be cool, could be not. As well as a race day shoe, which is a called the Float Zig X1, full length carbon fiber plate, two hundred dollar shoe. I think we're gonna have to start getting <coughs> more specific when it comes to race shoes. Because I feel like now any brand that throws a plate in a, in a shoe with a foam that's not EVA, yep. it's like, there's our race day shoe. And we're going to put an X in that name. Yeah. Thanks, Hoka. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of crazy how everyone's just, after Hoka put an X in every plated shoe. Well, that's uh, how they say this is our plated shoe. It's got an X. Which I think is actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. But then all these other companies, I feel like are putting X's in their name their names as well. Like I, it's, I don't know what it is, but this happened also in the early two thousands, like extreme. I don't know if you remember like Doritos extreme, oh, yeah. Coca-Cola extreme. Dude, X had its moment during 19, like 98. I, th I think it just gets so exciting when you see an X that you're like, let's throw an X on there. Dude, they had a whole song dedicated to the letter X. They're going to give it to you. Yeah. It's amazing. I, it, well, I think the plus is the same thing. You get the plus on something. Yeah. Like, this is a yeah. Dwarfin elite plus. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Ooh. It's more. It's like Sesame Street's letter of the day, but for a decade. Yeah. But that's a, yeah, so the X is the X Factor. Um, there's the X Factor show. Mm. That was a whole thing. There was a new uh, food nutrition company that I really liked that Alex Arslan said, hey, you got to check them out, which was Exact. Oh, yeah. They're out of Canada, and they gave me a little gift box. Nice. And I've been eating their wafer. Oh, yeah. Protein wafers. Pretty good. It, it's a cookie, bud. You know those like crispy, what are those cookies, the wafers? Like the, you know, like. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like yeah. a cookie crisp wafer. Mm -hmm. 
With chocolate on it and peanut butter. and That sounds pretty good. You know, yeah, it's just a nice, tasty protein wafer. I will say one of the greatest things that happened was untapped maple syrup. <gasps> Every year. They have an ice cream truck there with... You went next level. You X'd it. You went... I, I Robbie X'd, X'd his up. ice cream. So they have soft serve ice cream, maple, maple syrup. Maple flavor. Like, dude, it's so good. It's so good. And I and as you're getting your ice cream, they have samples of their waffles, their stroop waffles. And I was like, dude, the dots connected in my head. The neural neural networks were firing. And I saw they had a coffee flavored waffle. And so I put two and two together. And when I got my ice cream, got my waffle. Open it up, started dipping those chunks into the ice cream, dude. It's like a waffle cone. Was, and then I realized soft serve, you can't really do it, but with hard, um, you know, hard, hard ice cream, you could do it, but make a little waffle sandwich. But anyway, so I just was eating that, like just kind of how you do it with Wendy's French fries, but with a waffle. Um, do you, you eat Wendy's French fries and your fault fa- dipped on your That's disgusting. Right? People on the podcast, please comment away. Dude, <laughs> Wendy's fries in the frosty is the it, that's pit peak, like all right. sweet, salty, cold, hot, all the streams coming together. Okay, okay. I know Meg's never tried that, Mm-mm. and then so we ended if up. I did that in front of Meg. She may leave. Oh, that's sad. You might yeah. want to leave her all preemptively. But the, so I did that and then I actually crushed up the whole thing and just mixed, did a mix in uh, Blizzard style, which was pretty great. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Other thing that we got there was this orca. Um, I go, wait, a whale? No. Oh, like, dude. Yeah. yeah. I did, so I never actually did it while I was there because I didn't know. Did you do it when I you got home? I didn't want to experiment. I haven't yet. I will. Okay. But tell them. Okay. Yeah. So orca is this brand that has dirt weed in it. Um, basically it's the legal version of THC. It's Delta nine. I'd love that there's a, like a Delta nine and, and it, Robbie knew exactly what it was. It sounds like a mission from Navy from the Navy. Yeah. Seals. I don't know. I don't know how you get away with this, but they were giving away weed at the, um, at the running event and they're using it as a exercise enhancer. Yeah. So it says, uh, Orca energy. It says it's, I don't know what hometown hero means. Is that, it sounds that's like a, their, I think that's their parent company. Oh, it sounds like a charity for hometown fallen hero. soldiers. I think it sounds like a band. Yeah, there are, there's, I think a lot of bands that have similar names. Okay. Hawthorne Heights. So it says kickstart your mind and body with our fast acting blend of THC, caffeine, B vitamins, and zinc. Formula- well, I didn't know I had caffeine in it. Formula- <laughs> yeah, it's the upper and the downer. Oh, wow. Formulate it for active lifestyles. So microdose of THC. When they say microdose, two, 2.5 grams, right? Yes. I believe it was two. Two, two milligrams. Per pill or if you take them both? So per pill. Okay. So, so you're taking four milligrams if you take mm, two. It was two milligrams of hemp derived Delta 9 THC. So that is the legal, I believe in most places. Isn't that still weed though? Like THC is THC. It's psychoactive. Yeah. It's just derived in a different way. So it somehow skirts the, the rules, I believe. Anyway, I tried one while we were there. And I felt like I got a buzz, but then when Robbie told me it was dirt weed, I, I was <laughs> like, uh, maybe I didn't. So when I got home, I, I, you know, I had been away from the event. I wasn't tired from all the event stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let me just try it again and see what happens. Yeah. I felt something. I definitely felt. Oh, for sure. So, but here's a weird thing. I don't think it lasts very long. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. But, and so it's not legal in four states that have presumably outlawed Delta 9, which is Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and California. You would think that- Washington and Oregon, they're outlawing it because they want you to get the good (laughs) stuff. Seriously, you can shoot fentanyl next to a FBI agent. You can mix fentanyl into your maple ice cream. Right, and it'll probably give you a stipend for doing it, a small business loan for doing that. So Meg told me this morning at Starbucks, Uh she's in California, obviously, that a guy just walked in, grabbed like, like the mugs and stuff, 
and some food and walked out. And she's like, nobody, nobody looked at him or did anything. I'm like, that's California. Like they're not going to prosecute. So people are just like, whatever. I, mean, I just feel like crazy it's easy exist. Like how, how is this happening? How are we breaking down the society where people are like, I'm just going to walk in, take this. Stuff. Yeah. And that's not because he's poor. That's just because he's being, a, he knows he can. Ass. Yeah. Oh. What is that? I, I paid for a parking today. Oh, nice. Yeah. Look at you. Man, you're I, really spending that Christmas bonus cash. Yeah, six dollars to park out front. <laughs> um I have anyways. A choice now. I can either leave or re up. You think they'll catch you in the next fifteen minutes? I bet you they wait. No, it's I'm gonna go three one one your car. All right. But the yeah, so apparently it does give you that little boost you need. And you can just buy it online. So Orca Energy, if you're looking for that. And I was trying to see what actual reviews they had. I did feel like I got a little high. You probably did get a little bit because you don't really do that no. that much. So it said not too, some of the reviews are like, eh, it's a little bit of a buzz, but nothing just kind of relaxes you and gives you a little bit of energy with the caffeine. Relaxing and energy. Yeah. Um, but you said they tasted terrible, right? Well, I chewed them. I'm not sure you're supposed to chew them. <laughs> so that's the thing I did. When I didn't chew it at the event, I didn't feel like I got anything. Uh -huh. When I chewed it, I did feel like I got something. But then yesterday I took <laughs> took them and I swallowed them whole. I thought you were going to say you free-based it. Yeah, I, yesterday I, I melted them on a spoon. On a spoon. <laughs> um, I, I uh, took them and uh, it, was, it was, I got a little buzz. Okay. All right. Yeah, nice. I started, you know, you feel that little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Final check-in. Even though we make plans and we make goals, they don't always come through. But that doesn't mean you failed. Just means you tried something, you went after it, and the result wasn't exactly what you wanted. The great thing is you can always dust yourself off and try again. And that's what you have to do. If you really love something or want something badly enough, consistency is key. Pick yourself up, keep going, move towards the goal. Maybe the goal will shift a little bit based on stuff you learn, but the point is you have to get back in the ring. So do it, dust yourself off, get up, make 2024 one of the best years yet. All right. Speaking so of which, how's your football? football uh doing i'm not talking about that today i think i may have surpassed you i'm not doing fantasy football i will talk i will surpass you you probably will uh, but so that was a cool thing at the running event i'm trying to think of other cool things that happened we we had a good time a great time overall but it really is um, so i was all right you know what was really cool what des linden at the final at yeah. the y'all out boy concert oh, first off we worked our way down. I don't remember Robbie being there, but he was in the pictures. I see him right behind me. Yeah, I was there for a good while okay. so talking first, to you. <laughs> we went to a Nike party, which was what you'd expect. It was like the look and feel that you'd expect from Nike. Yeah, they had a good thing going on. Some games, open bar, make your own bracelet station where I made my kids some presents. Dude, free souvenirs. Can't go wrong there. That was a good move. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Y'all Out Boy. Mm. And, okay, every oh, year Y'all Out Boy kind of closes out. I like that shirt. I have my Nike shirt on, too. I, I, I forgot I had that one. Um, we went to the Y'all Out Boy concert, which every year closes out. It's the Brooks Party. Yeah. And I, I, I talked to Connor, I guess, who's the head of Brooks Footwear or whatever. Okay. Not Connor, Carson. Carson. And he was awesome, bought me a shot of tequila. But we were down on the floor, and I swear that's the hardest I've partied in a while. Uh, I got up right against the rail and held onto the rail because. Oh, you were the whole way down that front. Yeah, I was. I was on the rail. I think who was I next to? It was me, and I was next to somebody else who I trusted because I was like, I'm staying. Oh, Jarrett, I think uh, it might okay. be Jarrett. Um, <laughs> you trust Jarrett? <laughs> uh, I needed a safe person because here's uh -huh. the thing: our our new fella, uh, oh, Carl, Carl, he got a little rowdy. Is a psycho. Yeah. yeah, he started like a mosh pit at the Y'all Out Boy concert. Meanwhile, I was trying to turn her, so I was slightly sober. I didn't really- Slightly sober. I think I only had, no, I really only had- Yeah, but you haven't been drinking, so 
It might hit you. I had a drink at that first bar we went to right after, and then I had a, one beer at the Nike party. That was it. You didn't have anything at Yala Boy? I had like a white, one white claw. <laughs> okay. So, no, I don't even think I finished it. And so I, I'm looking behind us, and I'm looking at Carl looking like a maniac freaking. I don't know what it, it's like the science things where Adam's just bouncing all over the place, trying to get out of the nucleus or something. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Free radical. It looks like Sonic. Like if he was trapped inside of a vacuum sealed container. <laughs> yeah. And so there's Carl and I'm looking behind and like, no one's really doing anything behind us. And I'm thinking, does everyone just think we're insane or is this cool? Like, or is everyone having a good time? Um, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm banging my head <laughs> up at the front. Yeah. Carl's jumping around, slamming into people. But there were other and Taylor was too. Taylor was going nuts. Every once in a while I get hit in the back and I was like, I'd turn around and there's Taylor going, Hey, yeah. Yeah. But there, and there were people crowd surfing. Well, that's what it, at was, first I was like telling Carl to calm down. I was like, dude, calm down. Yeah. And then, I felt like some people started getting into it and a mosh pit started uh -huh. and then people started crowd surfing. And yeah. one of the people that crowd surfed happened to be Des Linden. Uh -huh. I was, so I wasn't there for that, but okay. It was yeah. amazing. So I, she's standing right next to me. So I'm getting video and photos and she's getting up and doing her thing and having a good time. Uh -huh. And I was like, I have all these videos and photos I could post. And then I was like, you know, maybe she wouldn't want these posted. Mm -hmm. So I was like, even in the state I was in, I was like, I'm just going to hold on to him. Right. And then I, you know, I was like, I was like looking for her being at, cause I was just going to be like, Hey, do you care if I post pictures that you're in and videos? That you're right. In? And I never saw her again after that. And so I, I didn't post them. And then she commented on my personal post that I put up. Cause somebody I think tagged her cause she's in, or she's in the photos. Right. And, um, I said, I said, Hey, I've, got videos that I didn't post. And she goes, probably better that you don't. I was like, all right, cool. But that opened up my moment to be like, hey, would you be on our podcast as a guest? Oh, uh, yeah. To which she responded, yes. Oh, nice, cool. So we we got a uh, guest for our podcast who I've been trying to get for a while. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to play too like desperate with Des. Yeah. I feel like he kind of kind of cut back a little bit. Yeah. Because we've had Kara on. We've had you know, people she's close to on. And I think we even did a live with her a long, long time ago. Long time, beginning of COVID. Yeah. But like to have her on as a podcast guest is, is a catch for yeah. me. Oh, and for sure. So the fact that she agreed and, and we're going to set up a time for That's her cool. to come on, I was pretty excited. Yeah. She is down for a good time all the time. So that was pretty cool to see her. You sound like you know her. No, I mean, from like looking at things <laughs> third party. <laughs> I definitely don't know her. Uh, and I, know I don't think we, I've ever talked to her in actual real life. I I have in real life I've said like two words. Like um when she was at the Brooklyn half mm -hmm. at the beginning of the day, I was like, I just and she's like, huh? Hi. And then uh at this thing, you know, I got her to post for pictures. I don't know if we had any verbal conversation. But yeah. we partied hard. But I'm just saying, from all the other books events, she always is up there in the pit. She's yeah, crowd surfing, doing whatever. And she's a huge emo fan, early 2000s emo fan, which, as you can imagine, the band Y'all Out Boy is the kind of music that they're playing. The only thing I was upset about is they peaked a little early. My favorite song that they do is Mr. Brightside. Yeah, same. And they did it really early. So I, I hurt my throat yelling Mr. Brightside yeah. too over and over. That and my own... My Own Worst Enemy by Lit are my my two favorites that they play. Okay, that one's good too. It's yeah. a good one. And uh, so we party, we closed that down. Yeah, so I went to like midnight. And, and then we went to P. Terry's. And you guys have talked that up like it's amazing. Uh, Not to say, if anything, it was a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like if you're going somewhere two in the morning, it should be a little scary. Like a Waffle House is always a little scary. Yeah, it's definitely had the Waffle House vibes. Yeah, and the other thing was, everybody says Austin is amazing. It's it's pretty nice. It grew on me this trip. I I liked it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But dude, man, it's out of control. It's a lot different. There's people eating out of garbage cans. <sighs> yeah, there was like. I know everybody gives Baltimore such a rough rap and Baltimore is 
amazing. Yes, we have our problems like any metro- metropolitan city. There's definitely some scary. But so these I are like scary among us. Yeah, some scary. Definitely some people with extreme mental health issues. And yeah, is there's at two in the morning. It was a little. It was a little bit interesting walking back. I wouldn't feel very comfortable walking back alone. Else, I would say that. And that's probably a lot of cities, obviously. Especially if you're a woman. Obviously in Baltimore, I wouldn't be walking alone either coming back from somewhere at, at that time. But um, I don't know. It was I don't just, know. You don't think you could walk through Fells Point and feel pretty comfortable two in the morning? Mm, uh, no, not really. I haven't been out in, in Fells Point two in yeah. the morning for since like 20 years now. Yeah. I mean, I used it's crazy because uh, 10 years ago when I worked in Fells, I would walk home and Two hundred dollars and you're probably the person that everybody's that tips afraid of though. At uh, two in the morning, which was crazy. Probably wearing your Jankos. Jankos. <laughs> ten years, ten years ago, I was now I was wearing the skinniest skinny jeans you could wear. All right. So it was like no mustache. The other end of that trend, no mustache at all. No. Did you have a beard then? I did. Okay. Well, there's something. Yeah. But actually, got you know what? I'm not sure. Might have. Might not have. But and then. To cap things off, so we only got four hours of sleep. At least I did. Uh, I don't think we could have got much more. I got up at five. Oh, I got up at I got up at five forty five and was going like crazy trying to pack my stuff because when I get into a hotel room, it's it, everywhere. It's everywhere, pretty much within an hour. All right, I I was pretty fortunate. I had all my stuff pretty much together, so I got up at five, mostly because I wanted to get coffee. So I go downstairs. The coffee's not ready. Oh, snap. So I go back upstairs, <laughs> nice. decide to keep, continue getting ready. By the way, coffee in the room, but I didn't want it. And Meg is trying to sleep because she has a marathon coming up, right? No, she was up because she's trying to stay on East Coast times because the start, she had to get up at four for the start of CIM. Okay. Oh, okay. So she was, when she we was, got up at five, she she didn't mind. Okay. But, yeah. Um, but you did show her the, when you got into the room, you did show her that your highlights of the night, right? I did, okay, so she may have been sleeping, but when I came in, you know, she woke up and, yeah. and I was trying to be real quiet, uh-huh. but she was like, hey. And I was like, oh, uh, oh, you're up. Cool. Let me show you a couple of videos <laughs> from, <laughs> here's Des, well, you know, crowd surfing. Here's what you missed. I'm like, it was the best Y'all Out Boy ever, which if you know Meg, Y'all Out Boy is probably her favorite night of the year. True, And true. Uh, I think I think she's a little disappointed. We'll be able to talk about that on Monday because I think that might be her one regret. Okay, Yeah. But then, so we got packed and everything, got to the airport. That's right. And then this, honestly, got, this is I kind of the high. I go to Robbie. Is that, is that Shane Gillis? And I was like, yeah, it's definitely him. Cause and then we're like, dude, there's, there's only, oh, I'm not going to say anything pertaining to his jokes on this podcast, but yeah, there's a certain type of person that looks like Shane Gillis and that when you see him in person, that's him. And it was great because we walked up to him and we're, look, we want to be, we know he's at the airport. So we, I don't, I didn't want to be like, right. take up too much of your time. So I kind of do the glance by like, Hey Shane, just want to tell you big fam. We love what you do. You crack us up. And then I was ready to walk away. Oh, and then I got in there. Yeah. And, we, yeah. and then it just became a conversation. I think he threw in the Pennsylvania connection. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if you throw that, throw in a hometown connection, then that always opens it up. So I was like, I basically, you know, said central South central PA represent. And he's like Hershey in the house. He's like, he's like, Oh dude. He's like, I went to uh Trinity high school. And, and I was like, yeah, I grew up outside of Hershey, went to lower off and, and, and uh, kind of connected on that. And then we were, he's like, what are you guys in town for? And, uh, and he was like, didn't give a crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. He's like, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, and then we, and then I was like, I know this is terrible, but could we do a picture? Yeah. He was cool. Yeah. He was like, honestly, he's one of those dudes who literally seemed like a normal person. Yeah. Just couldn't be nicer. But the greatest thing was we didn't like, I didn't want to bother him because I'm sure he gets bothered all the time. It's seven in the morning at an airport. He's probably like, (laughs) yeah, I'm like, I don't want to bug this dude. He's in line at Starbucks or whatever. So we get through and we're walking down the jetway or not the jetway, the, whatever you call it, the what is that? concourse. Yeah. And he walks up, starts walking with us, asking us questions like, 
like a regular human being. Yeah, I was just gonna, I knew he was coming behind us and I was just like, I'm not gonna say anything. So Robbie slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. No, you didn't. I think he went to. Yeah, he was like. Hey. He was like, what's going on, fellas? Kill some time. And then just started chatting it up with us again. And I was like, dude, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Made fun of us for living in Baltimore. So here's the best part of it, Robbie. I didn't, rem like, I watched his special. Yeah. But like, you know, I watched it, I laughed and had a good time and, mm -hmm. and then didn't think about the content again. It's not like I memorized it. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I wanted to impress my son who's, you know, 15. <laughs> uh-huh. And so I'm like, oh, this is the guy that I met in the airport. Let's watch his special. Uh-huh. And Meg's mom is there, obviously. So Rob and I'm like, yeah, watch it with us. And then he goes into the thing about the date, his ex dating a Navy oh, SEAL. Dude. Yeah, I was and, just thinking that. And yeah, it's and not awkward. Yeah, it got real awkward. And Meg's mom left. And I tried to fast forward, and like I ended up on more sexual oh, content. Oh yeah, you yeah yeah yeah. Like it just kept getting worse. <laughs> I'm like, well. You, you know, he's got other stuff. <laughs> uh, no, that's what happened. That's actually what happened. I think with my with Kimmy and then another friend of mine who I told to watch it, he, he watched it with his wife and the same thing happened. Um, so, yeah. And if you don't know, he's got a Netflix special and a YouTube special. Like, I feel like between him and Anders, mm -hmm. we could have like a whole comedy festival. Oh, man. Yeah, he, he might be, he's like one of the most famous, comic, hottest comics at this point. We might have missed the boat on that one. Yeah. But no, he was- that Are you was, talking about Anders? Yeah, both. Yeah. Um, but that was actually one of my, that might've been the highlight of my week. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> if Rob had just flown in, met Shane Gillis and I, left. I actually think about it way too much. And the fact that I could- Like, are you like, there's other stuff we could have talked about? I wanted to lay in, maybe like put, throw in a couple of uh, jokes that I had and see if they hit. Right, write some jokes for Shane Gillis. Well- You have jokes? The one that I always, I think I brought this up before on the podcast, but I, I love- it's one of my favorite things is that Central PA, where I grew up in the dead ass country and Baltimore have so many things in common. I think they're the same place. They just have different facades over them. Like the whole, I said this before, but they love shooting guns. Super cool, both places. <laughs> uh, like fire, setting off fireworks all the time, every time, riding dirt bikes literally everywhere. It's the same. It's the same thing. I like it. And I like it. and uh, I think at uh, uh, Alex, you know, um, uh, Herm Herm's runs. Mm -hmm. He said one of these guys is the funniest guy east of the Mississippi. The other one's uh, Shane Gillis. Oh yeah. I think he's talking about you. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I do. Um, but anyways, I it would have been the perfect opening too because he was talking about Baltimore and <gasps> Central PA, and we're like, dude, Baltimore's not bad. You know. And then just roll into it. Oh, that would have been good. And I just wanted to test it out, see if it hit. Next thing, Robbie's opening for Shane Gillis no, but in I'd, Austin, Texas. I'd be like, can you steal that? Can you just take that? If it, if you find a way to rework it where it's actually even actually funny. But the only problem is that someone would have to know both Baltimore and PA. I mean, it could be a most, I feel like most dirt. inner cities now are dirt bike center, on the East Coast. Anyway. This whole thing about becoming a Republican, I thought was hilarious too. Oh yeah, I mean it's because it's he does those things where you're like, oh yeah, it's totally true. Well, I what I find interesting about him is if you're truly sensitive, you're probably going to get offended by him. But if you actually listen to the joke, he's yeah. typically trying to uncover the lunacy behind, uh, yeah, he, ha being upset about the joke. And I honestly, I wanted to compliment him because I think he does a great job of threading the needle between where you're kind of offensive to everyone. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's included in your joke. So you're gonna, if you're a Republican, you're gonna get made fun of. If you're a liberal, you're gonna get made fun of. Um, and I have a friend If you're a Navy SEAL. I have a friends who are super, alt, super left wing progressive who think he's hilarious and same thing on the right side. So, so yeah. He's, he's a uniter, not a divider. I think that's true. But he's also somewhat representative of where I grew up, which is in the middle of Pennsylvania. You have both, you know, yeah, the, uh, progressives. I think that's the, the Mar capital. Maryland in general, and we're totally getting off. Meg would totally make us <laughs> oh, get yeah. back on track. But like, if you think about the Eastern Shore and yeah, Baltimore, yeah. it's it's like crazy. Oh, the two differences. Yeah, yeah like you're hardcore. You know, but I'm saying, yeah, no, 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 I agree with you. But I and exactly, Pennsylvania has. Pittsburgh and Philly. And then I do think in that middle ground, like around Harrisburg, it's a little like 
mixed about yeah. with like there can be Harrisburg rural. seem like a crazy town to me. Like Harris, that's one I Harrisburg's thought. Harrisburg's super weird. I was like, this is kind of cute and kind of depressing at the same time. That's a perfect description of Harrisburg. All right. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it has these cute little old buildings and like town streets. Like my son loves uh, watching older movies. Henry thinks that movies peaked in like the 80s. Oh. He thinks the Gremlin movie yeah. is like one of the best. Nice. And he's like, where are towns like this? Where could I live someplace where it has like <laughs> the fountain, you know, the... Yeah. It, the the whole whole little yeah. town station. And I'm like, there's a lot of those in like Pennsylvania and New York. Yeah. Jim Thorpe, PA. Yeah. Lancaster in some ways. Uh, I went to, there was like Falling Water. There was a town near there that was like that where mm. there's still like toy stores like that are in like little shops. Oh, yeah. Surrounding a town square. Yeah. Dude, I love those places where you can survive just like making, I don't know, Wooden, doll clothing wooden dowels <laughs> for toy cars that's like that's your central business model yeah and it works <laughs> yeah doll clothing it's like you actually but you, but you know what i hate about those towns those tiny little towns is that you you can make a shitty product and you can corner the market on it and you people just have to buy it because i went to case in point i went to jim thorpe pa once for a weekend and this is exactly one of those towns mm -hmm. and there's one pizza shop in town oh no and it was literally the worst pizza i've but ever that's had in their my pizza life. place but and that's you know, the place. people who grow up there probably think it's great possibly like, it was, that's the best pizza it was so bad and i it, but you had no choice if you just wanted pizza mm. and that's that's the only thing I don't like about this sounds. Then a else. new person comes in from out of town. They're like, yeah, we don't like your kind around here. <laughs> yeah. Making that good pizza. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, we should probably wrap up. All right. Yeah, this is a... Uh, we didn't get derailed too much. Which hey, Meg, crazy. I was just going to say, hey, Meg, how we do? Is she going to chime in there or no? Uh, maybe she'll tell me after she hears <laughs> okay. that. But yeah. Um. Anyways, so that's the, the running event 2023. Is that the year? Yeah, well, yeah. I guess it's... The like, year 2000. It's kind of like 2024 because it's preview of 2024. That's what was getting me confused when I was making the folder for it. I'm like, all the shoes that I'm putting in this folder are 2024 shoes, but it's the running event 2023. Yeah. Oh, you made a year 2000 reference. Yeah. Conan O'Brien. In the year 2000. That was a good sketch back in the day. Yeah, it was. Y2K scared everybody. <laughs> remember? The world was going to end. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Power was getting off. I remember when it hit midnight, we were all like, <gasps> yeah. I remember the barrels of water I had in my basement that my dad, <laughs> that my dad put in there. That was cool. You and Shane Gillis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All uh, right. Let's wrap it up. All right. That's it, folks. We'll see you next week. And uh, stay tuned for Monday's episode, which should be a very special one with a guest named Megan Murray. Peace. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom.